everyone, and welcome to another episode of Divination. Divination is a podcast and video show by Elegant Themes, the creators of Divi, the ultimate WordPress theme and visual page builder. The goal of Divination is really simple. We want to provide you with the knowledge, insights, and supportive community that you need to be successful with WordPress and Divi. I'm your host, Nathan B. Weller, and as your host, it's my job to facilitate that success by having various guests from the Divi and wider WordPress community onto the show to share their stories and experiences with you. In this episode, I'll be talking with Kate Toon of the Clever Copywriting School and what is becoming a small network of interconnected Divi eCourse websites. When I caught up with Kate recently via Skype, she told me her WordPress, web design, and Divi story. She also shared some great advice for anyone looking to make a sustainable living creating premium content like e-courses and other information products. I hope you enjoy listening in. Here is our conversation. Kate, welcome to Divi Nation. Hello, that's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so glad that you could come on. Um, as we were just mentioning a moment ago, we played a lot of uh, email tag to make this happen, and so I'm very glad that you're finally here with us on Divi Nation. Great. <laughs> uh, so let's start off by having you introduce yourself. Um, who are you? What's your full name? Where are you located? And uh, what's your business? Okay, so my name's Kate Toon. It's not a made-up name. It is actually <laughs> my real name. Uh, which I hated for years, but now I've kind of embraced. So I uh, live just outside Sydney, about an hour from Sydney in Australia, uh, just by the beach um, in a lovely little village. And as you can probably tell from the accent, I'm originally from the UK. So I've been in Australia for about 17 years, mm. quite a long time anyway. And for a living, I do lots of different stuff. I don't really like calling myself an entrepreneur because it sounds a bit, I don't know, something. Uh, so <laughs> I call myself a copywriter, an SEO lover. I uh, help copywriters learn how to be better copywriters. And I help small businesses learn how to grapple the Google beast and get better rankings. Um, and I do that through e-courses and books and podcasts and videos and all that good stuff. Awesome. Mm. Well, um, one of the things I like to ask people, um, as you know, you said you've been listening or watching uh, some episodes, is just to talk about um, kind of a day in the life um, for their freelancing. You know, everybody kind of approaches it a little bit different. What do you do on a daily basis to make your world work? Yeah, so I always start the day walking my little dog. He's in the background, Pomple Moose. He's called Pomple Moose. <laughs> and we go and grab a very large coffee, which I think is an essential as a freelancer. And uh, I head back to my little toon hut, my little she shed that I have in the back garden. Uh, so if you hear lots of parakeets and cockatoos, that's what it is. I'm kind of in the trees and the bushes. Um, and, you know, 99% of what I do is online. So mm -hmm. I'm in front of my screens. I'm recording videos, I'm recording podcasts, I'm helping my communities, I'm making things. So I like to make new products and create new courses. Uh, and every once in a while, I leave my little hut and go into the real world and do some networking. But day to day, yeah, it's mostly my hut. And then I'm lucky that uh, my husband and I both work at home. Mm. So uh, I do, the, he does the mornings, I do the evenings. So I pick up my son, we go to the beach, we get an ice cream, not every day. But some days <laughs> and uh yeah just come home kick you know make dinner watch a bit of netflix a bit of game of thrones or something like that you know ah uh, can't get enough game of thrones that's for sure can't, I mean, can't wait for the new series come that, on! I, i'm waiting for that and um uh, Silicon Valley, my two favorite HBO shows. Oh, I, I haven't watched Silicon Valley. I'm going to put it on my list. There we go. Oh my gosh. Enjoy that. If you've never seen it, you've got several seasons worth of hilarity oh, to, to binge on. Isn't that the best when you find one you like and there's like six series? Yes. Yep. There's my <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, you mentioned that you, um, you have a little like a office shack. What's, can you tell us more about that? That sounds really cool. Yeah, so I built this about three years ago. Um, it was kind of a bit of a turning point for my business. So um, I I decided I'd shared an office with my husband for a long time and we'd got to the point where like each other's breathing was irritating. Like, why do you breathe so loud? Stop breathing. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so yeah, I built this little hut. I didn't personally build it. Someone built it, but I did all the fit out. I did my mm. floors. I did sanding and painting. 
And yeah, it's great. It feels I have a little commute across my back garden oh, each nice. day. Pretty tough commute. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's just really nice to have your own space where you can shut the door and, and get on with your stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's that's like one of my dreams is that uh, I've been doing apartment living for so long. I'm like, OK, I'm going to get a home and I'm going to put an office there somewhere, either, you know, have a whole like floor slash room for it or a backyard yeah. office like that. I always see photos of these uh, like sheds online, like on Pinterest or on these like office inspiration boards and stuff like that. And I just drool over them. So you're, you're living the dream in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. My, my little she shed, I don't call it that, but it was featured in a coffee table book. Oh, of course was, it like, was. <laughs> pretty much the, the best thing that's ever happened to me. I felt like I'd made it. So uh, you that can get your awesome. man cave, get your little, uh, absolutely. You know, yeah. <laughs> and I'll put a little I'll put a little poop emoji in it too, like you have back yeah. here. <laughs> I'll send you one. When you get your cave, that will be my opinion gift. Okay. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that. Uh, so <laughs> we also like to um, learn about how people got into WordPress. So uh, as of right now, you have a whole network of Divi websites, obviously built on WordPress, that you use to promote your services and some e courses that you build. Um Tell us, let's go back to the very beginning of that process before you even got into using Divi and just talk about how you got into using WordPress and building websites in the first place. Yeah, well, so my background is agency. I used to work at Ogilvy and other places like that as oh, a producer. Wow. So um, I used to produce, producers is always called a bit of an oxymoron. So you actually don't produce anything, but you manage developers <laughs> and designers. Yep. And um, But obviously, you know, this is, we're going back 10 years and, WordPress wasn't really a thing, so we were yep. building you know, custom HTML websites, PHP, ASP, and I would be the person responsible for kind of architecting the site, doing the wireframes and the site maps, mm. and then managing the developers who built them. So, um, you know, familiar with all the kind of, you know, best practice usability stuff, but I hadn't actually ever built my own site. Um, when I decided to go freelance, um, I got a dude at work, thank you, Kane, who built me a blog and I didn't really get, even though I was working in big digital agencies, I didn't really get what this whole blog thing was. Mm, so this, mm. like, this is, I was a late adopter. This is like 2004, 2005. And he built me a blog and I was like, I don't want a blog. I don't want a WordPress blog. I want a website. Like I'm not a blogger. Um, but then obviously, you know, I worked out that it was actually a website and ridiculously enough I went out as a freelancer as a WordPress developer with my one site so I did a lot of building sites for my friends you know for like two hundred dollars just straight templates pulled off WordPress um, and you know WordPress has evolved so much since oh, yeah. back then and in the last 12 years you know it's hugely different but you know you could still knock up a pretty good looking site in about a day so um, I did that a lot and I built my husband's uh, website for him um, and it kind of just grew from there. But then I did move away from WordPress development a bit and focus more on copywriting and SEO, partially because I just couldn't deal with the maintenance of people coming back to me month after mm -hmm. month wanting mm -hmm. stuff done. So uh, I kind of like to get in and get out, you know. Then she's like, bye. So, uh, <laughs> so um, but I always enjoyed it. I really enjoy the fact that I can make something and, uh, you know, I can make something happen myself and I don't have to rely on, you know, anyone else to build my site and change things on my site. So f therefore, when it came to building my own sites, I built them myself. Um, and I, I do, you know, occasionally get help from when I really mess something up. I get help from another developer called Marco Gatta, who's great. But 95% of it I do myself, so yeah. Oh wow, so tell us a yeah. bit about the websites that you have created, um, particularly for your business, not necessarily client sites, because yeah. uh, you know one of the things we'll get into a bit later here um, is your, your e-courses and using Divi as an e-course uh, website and an e-course theme. Uh, so first, before we get into that, let's talk about just using Divi and how the combination of Divi and WordPress kind of is your preferred tool set. Uh, it seems, and, and why that is. Yeah, so I've you know I'd, I'd gone through a lot of different themes before I stumbled upon Divi, probably about maybe three years ago, mm. um, and I used it on my own site first, so Kate Toon Copywriter, which is just a service site. It's a brochureware site for copywriting services. So you know, not really any 
fancy functionality. I think, you know, the, the sexiest thing was a slider, which I've now got rid of. But, you know, it was it's pretty basic, but, you know, the, the ability to make it look so professional was what I really liked. Um, and, you know, that I could actually tinker around with colors and things without having mm-hmm. to be super au fait with CSS. Um, so that was the first site. I now have six Divi sites, which is, I need to stop, take me step away <laughs> from the Divi, stop. So I've got six. So I have my husband's site uh, that I moved across the Divi. I have a site for my podcast. Um, I have the Kate Toon site. I have um, a hub site for Kate Toon over the top. And then I have my two kind of money earning sites, which are um, the Clever Copywriting School and the Recipe for SEO Success. And that's where the courses and the shops mm. and subscriptions are. So yeah, Divi Fanatic here, I'm afraid. So I, I'm, uh, I noticed that you had this like kind of network of Divi sites because all your footers have like, here are all my other websites and little like little ads for them. I thought that was kind of cool. Do you get a lot of cross traffic between your your sites? Is that how, a lot of cross promotion? And does that work into how you're actually making money or is it just how you keep people in the know for your different projects, I guess. I'm just curious. Yeah, well, I guess it all evolved. You know, businesses, you know, I didn't, st- I don't, I'm not somebody who has a great master plan. I don't really plan at all. I kind of just, whatever happens, happens, mm. which might not be the best way of working, but it works <laughs> for me. So, you know, Kate Toon has been around for a while. It has, I, obviously, because I do SEO, it ranked really, really well. So that's kind of like my, you know, it's the first glass in that tower of champagne glasses mm-hmm. where the people pour in. But then, obviously, people coming to that site they want lots of different things so then i can send them down to if they want to learn more about Mm. seo or copywriting but then people now the other sites have grown up or then someone might come in down here and go back up to here or so it does work i mean it's i've created the separate you know looking back i might not have created so many separate brands because obviously there is a degree of maintenance and Mm -hmm. stuff to keep them all up but um it also helps me differentiate and it keeps it interesting for me that I can have like clever copywriting school day and just focus on that mm. and yeah so there is there is a lot of crossover but some people do just stay in their silo as well so it yeah, kind yeah. of it depends really what people want and is this just still just you maintaining and running all these different things you, do you have like an assistant or other freelancers that you work with so no I've tried having uh assistants and it just I'm it just doesn't work for me. So I have a VA or a DA for a, a few hours a week mm. and I subcontract out some uh, design work and I have a bookkeeper. So I don't have a team. It is just me and the dog who is my CFO, <laughs> my chief furry officer and my kind of guru and my mentor. But no, it's just, it's just me. Um, and that's, you know, not that this is meant to be an advert for Divi, but it kind of maybe is. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I have all the sites on the same platform because mm. you can jump back and forth between them much easier. And yeah, maybe. and when one thing, you know, like when I find a new widgety thing on Divi that I didn't realize mm. was there before, I can quickly go boom, boom, boom across yep. all six sites. So that helps keep my maintenance down. But I, what I do is instead of growing my business and getting people into my team to make to cope with the growth, I grow my business just enough that I can cope with the growth. Mm. And when it gets too big, I just stop doing things for a while. So I'm all about maintenance and trying to create recurring income and passive income and low level, keeping it chill. I think that's awesome. I mean, a lot of people, we talk a lot actually about scaling and, you know, what are the challenges that you've had to face of bringing employees on or working with other, you know, other freelancers, other consultants. But um, we've had a few people now, and you're definitely in this category, who are like, you know, my goal is not to run a business empire. My goal is to have a sustainable life for myself where I'm the boss. I set, you know, my standard of living and my, you know, my daily routine and all that. And I think that is awesome. Like, I think that's something that those people are the least stressed out people that I interview. <laughs> So. Yeah, totally. I think it's, I mean, you know, I'm sure you've seen Simon Sinek and his whole why. Mm-hmm. And I think yes. it's super important to understand your why. And I remember when I started freelancing, one of my biggest whys or my, you know, reasons was I never wanted to have a team of people because I used to have mm-hmm. like 40 people working for me. Yeah. And every at least once a day, someone would cry, not because of me, but because of work, <laughs> advertising agencies, they're pretty stressful. And I just never wanted to be responsible for someone else's home loan, Mm -hmm. for someone else's life. 
I just, I don't want that. I, I can't, I don't like being responsible for my own life and my own home loan. So I definitely don't want to do it for anybody else. So yeah, that's, it's been a learning. Like I've tried the team thing. It doesn't work for me. So mm. now I'm scaling back and I'm much happier, way much happier. That is awesome. So that seems like what's um, kind of empowering you to, to do that is your, your e-course work and having mm. that recurring income through selling those courses. Can you talk a bit about, you know, a, what are those courses? And then B, maybe we can we'll all ask some follow-up questions on like how you actually built those things. But what, what are the courses yeah. and, and what are the products, I guess, or the selling points? Well, what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to create, you know, it's called diversifying income streams. Mm -hmm. Sounds so silly. But yeah, so I I have a big course, which I run, like it's a launched course, which runs two or three times a year, which is an SEO course. It's a seven-week learn oh, okay. how to do yeah, from the ground up. So, and so, you're yeah. managing that as it goes on. So it's not like just an ongoing, anyone can buy it anytime. It's, nice. Okay. So, and that has coaching with it. So it's quite oh, intense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it, but the price reflects that. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, I run that a couple of times a year and that's like maybe 80%, well, 70% of my income. And then I have a couple of evergreen mini e-courses on SEO on there as well, which sell like maybe two or three a day. Oh, nice. And that's, side and then on the other side i have the copy school which is a membership style site mm -hmm. so people pay an annual membership ship subscription sure. um, but there's also a shop so people can buy templates and oh, wow. checklists and guides and mini courses so it, it's kind of what i wanted to do is make sure i earn something every day even if one day it's like ten dollars mm -hmm. i get my phone and, and i have it set up to make a little ping noise every time i make a sale so i get the paypal ping and it's a very <laughs> reassuring sound uh so yeah different things big courses little courses shops evergreen launches it's a whole mix oh that's fantastic do you ever get just like a flurry of pings and just go have a party oh <laughs> yeah, the other day I was doing some gardening and my phone just went bing, 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 bing. And weird things will happen. Like I'll be in a shop like debating buying like a new bike or something. <laughs> and I'll be like, I can't afford it. And then my phone will ping and it'll be like, you just sold $237 of courses or of templates. And I'll be like, really? I can afford it. <laughs> I can now. <laughs> yeah. It's like the gods are start telling me. It's very, very odd. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> So let's yeah. talk about building these courses. I mean, let's first talk about your, would you call it what, uh, a mastermind course? What was the the one that included coaching? The course. Yeah, it's, I, I shouldn't really, it's an e-course, but it's an okay. e-course with coaching, I guess. E-course yeah. with coaching. Ta yeah. Let's talk about the plugins and tools that you use to create that uh, with Divi and what made you choose those? Because I think a lot of people are interested, but there are so many different options. It would be good to hear from someone who has got it working and has a system in place and, and they probably know the yeah. ins and outs so it was funny when you contacted me about this it was very serendipitous because in the last six months i have gone full circle so i was mm -hmm. like is divi and a membership plugin the right solution or should i move away from it and i actually invested a fair bit of time and money in looking at learning management systems mm -hmm. and uh, came back so it's okay. very you know, I've got some good <laughs> insights here i hope so the first version of recipe was built with divi and member press okay. so i used member press which allows you to um partition content based on levels of membership um, it allows drip feeding content, but not, not very well. So mm -hmm. you do have to manually unlock the, the weeks, as it were. Like, now I'm going to give you right. access to this week, which is a tiny bit of admin. Um, and then I used Affiliate Royale with that to have an affiliate program. Mm -hmm. But I always found MemberPress very clanky, and it didn't work well with WooCommerce, which I was using for my store and for the payment mechanism. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'm going to go and try out one of these fancy LMSs. So I looked into yeah. LearnDash mm -hmm. um, with BuddyPress, and it comes with its own theme as well. Yeah, and yeah. I actually a whole site built on a staging server. And I got in, and I just could not, I did not like the lack of flexibility. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm used to, with Divi, being able to make my widget bar however I want to and drag things in and create gro global elements. And when yeah. I suddenly got this thing, and it was like, I can't do any of those things anymore. Right. And I was like, I, I can't get my head. I don't want to do this. So I actually trashed the whole site. Oh, I went wow. back. To, I know it was a big, but you know, sometimes you have to do stuff. Yeah. To sometimes realize, you just got to try it and get your, yeah. You know, to and jump everyone was feet. going, 
yeah, everyone was going LMS, LMS, LMS. And I was like, am I missing something? So then I went back to Divi. I changed from MemberPress and now I use WooCommerce memberships mm -hmm. with WooCommerce subscriptions and WooCommerce stores. So I'm a, it's a lot uh. of Woo. Um, and, you know, one thing I really like about Woo is that their customer service is so good. So yeah. I think that's such an important part of choosing a plugin because it, they never work quite as you want them to. Or if you want to move outside the box even slightly, yeah. you really need someone that you can speak to. So, yeah, now I use Divi with Woo uh, memberships. And I'm also now just recently set up subscriptions because what I want to do is set up um, monthly payments. Right. So after you finish the course, if you want to continue having support, you can pay X amount a month and you can join a group and get support that way. So, yeah, I've gone full circle. I, I you know, I went away and I came back. And uh, you can do pretty much everything that these LMSs can do. So I have quizzes. I use Watu mm -hmm. Quiz for quizzes. You know, I have my videos in little expandable boxes. Mm -hmm. I guess the only thing that I don't have at the moment but, uh, is kind of like uh, achievement awards. Um, yeah, yeah. Get through Buddy Press, but what I actually found was leaderboards and who's doing the best at the course kind of stuff really didn't resonate with my audience because mm -hmm. it made the ones who weren't doing well just feel yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough pressure in their life without seeing that they're bottom of a blooming leaderboard. So <laughs> uh, it was it wasn't right for my audience, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, what? Yeah. So you. I think one thing that I've heard for people who get heavily involved in the WooCommerce add-ons is they complain that, oh my gosh, this is so expensive. But um, I think what you mentioned was a good point is that when you're working within a, an ecosystem of plugins and extensions that uh, are designed to work together, you're just going to get less headaches. And with somebody like you know, WooCommerce, which is now owned by Automatic, you're going to get yeah. pretty superior support as well. So that's part of what you're paying for um, it is and i don't like spending money don't get me wrong i hate <laughs> spending money so even when i've got the woo thing set up i like i went into you know various there's great groups on facebook for mm -hmm. divi um and other wordpress groups and i said hey does anybody know a subscription plugin that works with woo but doesn't cost as much with woo and i got it i can see your cat it just did a really cool ninja jump onto its they are tongue. going nuts um, if anybody hears what sounds like tiny <laughs> horses on carpet it's my cats they're just trying to get that moment of fame you know i guess um, so uh so yeah I, I got a cheaper subscription plugin Mm -hmm. And it didn't work, and I started getting errors on my site, and it was conflicting mm -hmm. with other plugins. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, look, for the sake of another hundred dollars, yeah, just get yeah. the thing that all works together. I mean, Woo is a bit, it's a bit like that. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's free, but you need this to do this, and this to do this. Oh, you want to do that? That's another twenty dollars. And yeah, I, you know, but the way I look at it is, everything I've spent, I only need to sell one person a year. And it covers all of it. That's what I was just so, going to say. If you're actually yeah. like, if you, if you're doing it kind of on a whim or you're doing it as a, maybe this will work out or whatever. Yeah. It might start to feel really expensive, but if you're actually making money through these projects, it pays for itself surprisingly fast. It does. And the cus as you said, you can't buy peace of mind and having, mm -hmm. you know, the woo guys will actually log in to your site. Yep and fix the problem, you know, and that is priceless. So, um, but I also would suggest that if you do have that feeling that you start gradually, you start with WooCommerce, mm -hmm. you have your shop and then you get memberships and then you get, you don't buy everything in one go because it takes a while to get your head around the functionality that you have got, get that all working, integrate mm -hmm. it with PayPal or Stripe or whatever you're using and then do the next thing, you know? So don't just, I know a lot of people, go out and buy expense and that's me go out and buy expensive plugins and then six months later they start using them because right yeah you know so you've and basically that's, lost that's half your year subscription fee exactly yeah. so wait until you're ready you know yeah, so that's yeah a good point have you switched yeah. all of your um e-course sites or e-course projects over to this setup of divi and woo plus extensions Everything now yeah. again so yeah. once i find a plugin that works you know, it's like I go through all the sites and clear out the old mm. and add the new, you know, because, um, you know, the biggest thing you have when you have a site like especially um, Clever Copywriting School, which has a shop, a directory and membership and subscription mm -hmm. is plugging conflicts. Oh, yeah. So they just 
they don't play well together. So that I spend a lot of my time resolving that. So once I find a good one that works well with my others, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not letting you go, you know? <laughs> so please don't go bankrupt, company. Please don't die. Please stop maintaining your plugin because I need it. So, and that's yeah. something, yeah, like you don't have to worry about with uh, yeah, the combination of, you know, WordPress, Divi, and, and Woo. So this... We're not going anywhere. Yeah. The automatic's yes. not going anywhere. So yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> uh, so for everybody listening in, let's just like recap those plugins real quick. So your setup mm -hmm. is obviously WordPress. Your theme is Divi. Uh, your e-commerce plugin is WooCommerce. And now run through like kind of slowly and specifically oh. on the extensions that you use with WooCommerce to to do everything that you need. Yeah, so I've got um, WooCommerce Basic, but then with me WooCommerce memberships and subscription subscriptions, so you can get those in a little package. Okay. I use Active Active Campaign as my email uh, marketing tool. So there's a little plugin called Active Woo, which links mm. Woo to Active Campaign and tags people, so that someone buys product X, I can set up a whole automation that will then go out to them that's totally related to product X. And then for the directory, I use Sabai directory, which is a very low cost directory plugin, limited oh, wow. functionality, but it's pretty good. And then all the standard stuff like WordFence and, you mm -hmm. know, Backup Buddy and WP Schmush for my images and sure. all the standard ones. Because yeah, yeah. obviously I'm so very conscious of SEO. So mm -hmm. I'm always trying to optimize my site for speed and, you know, make sure it's cached well and all that and obviously secure with all those customer details i need to make sure it's super secure as well so all those yeah. as well well speaking of um speed and security and all that who are you hosting your uh courses with your so sites? i currently host with i just migrated to SiteGrounds, oh, okay. um which is a, 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 com a company over here i was hosting with good old bluehost which i know doesn't yeah. get a great rep but it was great and i must admit i don't want to bag anyone i've had quite a lot of server issues since site grounds the um and we can't quite put our finger on it's been going on for a month i keep getting 503 errors so oh, no. um, if you go to my site and get a 503 error let me know because they promised me it won't happen again so uh <laughs> it's you know that's the thing because i like to keep kind of evolving and, and changing things i'm a tinkerer mm -hmm. and um you know my husband keeps on saying to me can you just stop making anything new can we just can we have a month where you don't come up with a new idea so this year for me is all about maintenance mm -hmm. and uh, not doing anything new which sounds very unentrepreneurial so yeah <laughs> do we got a, you're the cfo back there and want to get on yeah, camera is that what's going on i think he just wants to join in briefly i'm just gonna you know let's you said it was a casual podcast so yeah, i'm just gonna <laughs> don't let him see it's the like cat. a little lion yeah, he's like it's a amazing. lion, koala, Ewok. Like, there you go, dude. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, hosting-wise, it sounds uh, like you're still trying to find the ideal fit. Is that fair? I am. Yeah. And uh, I think the thing is, it's also just to do with uh, popularity. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, as your, as your sites grow, you know, you do need that bigger bandwidth. And when you have lots and lots of members logging in to a site it's not necessarily about bandwidth it's about the amount of processing mm -hmm. speed because there's a lot of plugins doing stuff at the same oh, yeah. time and calling mm -hmm. files and i think that's the thing it's just there's so many people interacting with the sites that i need to kind of upgrade and upgrade yeah, and yeah. you know that's well, how many people aspect. are running through your courses like how many how many members do you have on these sites well, so on um, on recipe, it's because it's a uh, like I limit the numbers. So I've got about two hundred and fifty on the big course, mm -hmm. but then about three thousand or so have done the mini courses, mm. and they come back to them time and time again. Yeah, yeah. So you know, on any given day, it's hard to say. Um, and again, you know, I am just a one woman band, mm -hmm. so it's not like I've got a team of technology <laughs> people waiting by to help. So yeah, that's something I have to think about. You know, there will become a tipping point where it's like. No, you do need to have like a permanent tech person who can mm -hmm. deal with issues. I don't want to get to that point. Or so just like managed hosting maybe at some point. Yes, if, I think if, that's what I'm going to yeah. have to go for. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're cool. Um, we're getting close on time and uh, I like to try to keep these to around a half hour. Uh, let's just say uh, as, a, as our final thought and our sign off here that, you know, someone's interested in um, starting a – information business or e-course business uh, using Divi and WordPress and let's say they want to use the uh, the plugins that you've recommended uh, 
you said earlier that you recommend waiting on getting your tools until you are actually ready for them. What are the mm -hmm. steps that people need to take before diving into actually building their site and using all these awesome tools that we've talked about? What do they need to do first to be ready for that? I think one of the most important things is, you know, really understand your audience and what problem you're going to solve. And, uh, you know, think about your, your niche. You know, there's a lot of very generic mm -hmm. courses out there. And I think the more niche you go, uh, the, the more success you will have. It doesn't sound, it sounds counterintuitive, but, you know, when I launched my SEO course, people were like, it'll never work. Um, but it, you know, because it, you know, who's interested in that, but times have changed and people mm -hmm. are. So I think you need to know your audience. I think you need to prepare your course material. That is the lion's share of it. So 90% of the effort mm -hmm. goes into, you know, not just thinking about what you're going to include and what you're not going to include. That's just as important. And, um, you know, working out the best way of teaching, you know, how are they going to learn it, then do it? Are there going to be quizzes and FAQs? Planning all that out. And then I would totally recommend doing in-person workshops first. Mm -hmm. So you test your material out in front of real humans because there's nothing like seeing someone looking like this halfway through your material. That's a great idea. Going, this is a really bad module. It doesn't work. Yeah, so yeah. I did I did lots of workshops and then you need to, you know, make all your PowerPoints, record all your videos, upload them all to I use Vimeo for my mm -hmm. video hosting. You, know, you need to edit them, you need to get your sound, your graphics. And then when you've done all of that and you've got your 70 videos and your course notes and your downloadables and whatever, then start your development. Mm. Uh, because what I did was I built my site and then it sat there for six months and I slowly added stuff in. Piece um, by piece. And and <laughs> piece by piece and then realized, oh, that's not going to work. I'm going to need another plugin. Mm. So once you've got it all structured out, uh, then I think start your development. Because then once you've got that, like you can actually put together your membership site in a matter of weeks. Mm -hmm. But when you take that kind of, I'll add a bit, I'll add a bit, I'll add a bit, it takes eons. So, yeah. 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 Do the awesome. pre-work. So mm. speaking of the pre-work specifically the the writing and planning are there any tools that you recommend for people who are going to write something as potentially sprawling as as an e-course yeah so i think you know there's a lot to be said for a big wall with post-it notes on it but um, mm. i like to use um slick plan which is a freemium app where you mm. can map out sites um so you get one free map and then if you want to have more maps and you can kind of you know you can map out the structure so module one and then you can map out the sub modules oh, cool. um so i use that and then i you know there are tools like scrivener which yeah. are great if you want to use a lot of different content but i just use word i'm a, I'm a copywriter I, I like word um and then you know it's the basics I, I think the thing that people worry about is that their videos have to be like hollywood level production mm -hmm. values so mine are by no means Hollywood. You know, they're PowerPoints, they're useful, they're, they're factual. I do a lot of screen capture. I use, let me just see what I use. I use ScreenFlow yep, me to too. record my, <laughs> my on-page stuff. I edit in iMovie. Um, you know, it's 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 all doable on my desktop. That's yeah. what I wanted to have. Uh, this round, I did get some professional sort of intro videos for each of the modules where I'm oh, all like, cool. hi, welcome to module two. Um, <laughs> just, to make it, just to make it a bit more schmick. But people, once people are in the learning things, they don't care if yeah. the graphics are animating across the screen. Sure. They don't care. They just want to learn. Yeah, so yeah. Um, They want to get in and they want to get out so that they can imp like improve themselves. Yeah, we found that with the blog too, for sure. Yeah, and I think shorter is sweeter. So what I'm doing this round, because I have to update the course every year because SEO unfortunately changes all the time. Mm -hmm. This year I'm making all my videos like under 10 minutes long. Yeah. So that people can feel a sense of achievement. I ticked off three videos today. Whoop, whoop. Um, and they can find their way back to the next video rather than great hour long videos where they have to go, oh, I got up to minute 27 mm -hmm. and now I'm going to try, you know. So short videos are really good as well. Well, awesome. I think that's more than enough for anybody who want, wants to uh, follow the same path to, to digest and get started on. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Kate, for coming on the show. I really enjoyed having you on Divination. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been great fun. Well, that's all for this episode of Divi Nation. As always, I just want to give another big thank you to our guest, Kate Toon, for coming on the show. If you have any questions about the topics that we discussed in this episode, feel free to leave them in the comments section on the Elegant Themes blog. 
I've made sure that Kate is aware of the episode going live, and I'm sure that she'll be more than happy to drop by and answer any questions that she can. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone. I look forward to seeing you around the community. And as always, I'll be back right here next week with another episode of Divination. <laughs>